Hey everyone, welcome back to 6.5 on the road from Las Vegas, baby. It's our coverage of Dell Technologies World 2024, the AI edition. Lisa Martin here with Dave Nicholson. Dave, we have been talking for a couple of days now with Dell, its ecosystem of partners, which continues to impress me with its strength and its depth. We're gonna be talking with Omar Rawashdai next, Power Edge Product Planning Manager at Dell Technologies, because there's some news coming out that we wanna uncover. Omar, welcome to the program, great to have you. Thank you, Lisa, for having me, and Dave. Uh, great to be here. I'm very excited uh, about uh, announcing uh, the 16G entry one socket rack and tower, yes. uh, namely the T116 R260. So let's unpack that, the T160, the R260. Tell us about the highlights of each and the what's in it for me as a customer. Great question. So. The T160 R260 uh, are all about uh, compact form factor, affordable price point, and the right level of performance. So both T160 R360 offer 100% CPU performance compared to their uh, predecessors or the previous gen. They offer 50% uh, latency reduction, uh, as well as a good reduction around the, the uh, physical footprint. So I, I'm thinking a sustainability angle. We know we talk with so many Dell customers and Dell Technologies executive leadership team itself in terms of why, how sustainability is so incredibly important to your customers, your partners, and that a lot of customers say, we only wanna work with organizations that are actually going to help us achieve our sustainability initiatives. What is that factor, the sustainability factor in these advancements from Dell's lens? Great point. Uh, so for the T160, as I mentioned, it is a small form factor, 50% uh, smaller, almost 50% uh, smaller than predecessor. Is it, so, so like a 1U standard rack or what, what, what is it? What is it? It's actually, it's a 3U uh, small depth uh, tower. Okay. Uh, that's uh, around 17 liter. Oh, it's okay. It's 42% smaller in size than its predecessor. And to hit on the sustainability aspect, yeah. it's a very uh, sustainable uh, design uh, using sustainable material. Prime example, the slick unpainted chassis design that uses a plated recycled steel. Plus, you know, you know more uh, sustainability material using less adhesive in the tagging and much, much more. That's outstanding because like I mentioned before, we talked to so many customers who say it's, a, it's an imperative for us as a business, whether they're doing an RFP or whatnot, to work with organizations that will help them on their sustainability objectives. Talk a little bit about the, the target market. Yeah. Who are your target customers for these new advanced servers? G great question. Uh, I think uh, given the nature of these entry enterprise servers uh, and the fact that with this generation, uh, we made them more smaller form factor to address uh, the use cases of remote office, branch office, also unruggedized near edge use case to, and deployments. Prime example, retail uh, segment, manufacturer segment, be it uh, you know, your famous uh, uh, restaurant uh, or uh, you know, uh, auto parts that will leverage uh, these, these servers for their uh, enterprise uh, general purpose uh, use cases, be it data processing, virtualization, or what have you. So these aren't systems that are necessarily designed for the highest demanding, or the most demanding workloads on the planet. This is very much in the Dell ethos of fit for function. What do you need at the edge in your dental practice? Exactly. You don't necessarily, you don't need a thousand node AI training cluster. <laughs> D definitely. So what, so what are these, what, what do they look like in terms of kind of typical configurations? What, what, what type of storage goes into these yep. systems? Great question. So uh, as I mentioned, these are entry affordable enterprise uh, servers mm -hmm. uh, with uh, various uh, form factors. The T160 is a tower form factor that can be placed vertically or stacked horizontally on, on, uh, with multiple uh, nodes. 
So the, the, the R260 is a one new rack okay. that we made shorter in terms of depth, less than 17 inch, 24% less than its predecessor. Uh, and to your point, in terms of use cases, these uh, two servers uh, use the latest Intel Xeon E2400 processors uh, with up to eight cores, uh, offering customers 100% CPU performance uh, boost from pre pre previous generation, 50% uh, latency reduction, 23% power efficiency than the, the previous generation. So you, and customers can use it for their virtualization, data processing, file print, general purpose uh, kind of workloads. So it is interesting because this is tagged as AI edition, yeah. but it's good to know that, I think I use the term adults in the room, people are still <laughs> realizing that there's a whole lot of IT going on outside of the AI revolution. Uh, where, what's the typical buying pattern or path to market for these devices? Are people going to Dell.com and configuring and having them delivered? Are they, are they going through partner VARs through your channel? What, is that, what does that look like typically? Great question. Both. Okay. So customers you know, who want to buy a few out of these servers, they can easily go to Dell.com, configure these servers, and have them shipped uh, to you know, their preferred location. Uh, for customers that want to work with uh, sellers, channel partners, they will also uh, can uh, do so, and uh, we offer programs uh, through our channel partners for this service. From what I understood doing some research, the T160 is really ideal for organizations across verticals that are looking to really do real-time data processing at near edge installations. You mentioned a couple of verticals. You mentioned retail, you mentioned manufacturing, but you also mentioned from a price point kind of entry level. Talk a little bit about the T160 and its target in terms of helping organizations at the, at the edge in near real time. Great point. So as I mentioned, you know, these are uh, entry enterprise servers with uh, a lot of uh, enterprise features. Uh, around uh, security, resiliency, uh, uh, iDRAC uh, that uh, customers, enterprise customers would like to leverage. Uh, so uh, for, for a price point, the sweet spot is, is around this than 3K uh, for these servers. Uh, and you know, for uh, the T160 and R260, one thing that we introduced given the uh, deployment use cases and workload, we now offer uh, you know, filtered bezel that will, you know, protect uh, the inner hardware component of the server from dust and Different grease. Different environments, harsh environments. In harsh environment, yep. exactly, be it dust, grease, you know, hair, uh, lint, or what have you. This will protect the, these inner components, uh, ensuring unobstructed airflow for these servers that will result in a better performance, power, and acoustic experience. So you, when you say entry-level enterprise, I'm imagining that this market segment consists of some small businesses who might seriously be thinking about running their business on one of their children's redeployed Alienware gaming computers. <laughs> <laughs> and, yep. But, yep. but your, but your yep. pitch would be, no, 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 no. This is your business. We can meet your business requirements with a legitimate enterprise class server, but you said for starting in the neighborhood of $3,000. So you're bridging that divide between the PC yes. and the enterprise there. Um, is there conversation about AI at the edge with regard to the products that you manage and plan for? Or is that more of um, AI on the edge in an AI-enabled personal computer interacting with your servers? Is there a place for that AI on the edge in your products, or is that, or is that part of the strategy or not? No, that's, that's a great point, and, and thanks for the question. So again, g given these uh, T160 and R260 are part of the compact, entry, affordable, uh, one-socket servers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we couldn't fit 
the, the enterprise GPUs uh, while still maintaining the, the, the cooling and thermal constraints for the system. So on the other hand, we have another two servers that we launched uh, almost six ago in December that are almost you know, the uh, second, second uh, price uh, tier uh, or a, a better option for our customers that would like a level of a higher level of uh, availability, scalability, and resiliency. And these two servers, namely the two T360 and R360, offer uh, GPU options for data inferencing and, and AI workloads uh, for entry servers. So fit for function, which Correct. is what, what Dell has become exactly. very well known for over the decades. 40 years now, I understand? Well, 40. Maybe, maybe 39 years ago, Dell wasn't known for all of this <laughs> as much as it is today. But the point is the ability to deliver fit for function. And so not everyone needs those things. Not everyone needs AI at the edge for what they're doing with your entry level systems. Right? Correct. But on that point, to your point, what's the appetite for organizations from an AI perspective? As we heard during Michael Dell's keynote, everything was, was it, it's Dell Tech World 24, the AI edition. He talked about the five different AI PCs. He talked about what all is happening at servers and storage with compute and all of the ambitions Dell has for AI. What are those conversations like with some of the customers that are targets for these servers in terms of knowing that when you hear a Jeff Clark or a Michael Dell talk about, if you're not on the AI train already, you're missing out. Yeah, that, that's a great question. I think it, it's, it's a huge opportunity. A lot, a lot of customers trying to tap into uh, the AI and all the use cases and, and, and workloads it, 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 it brings. Uh, we continually looking into you know, affordable uh, AI solution in this, in this segment. Uh, and uh, you know, we'll be adding uh, more options, even uh, post RTS, that will cater to our customer needs uh, around AI and AI use cases for the entry service. And I think we definitely know that about Dell in terms of yesterday when Michael Dell was on stage talking about we have big ears and it showed like beer. Yeah. <laughs> um, in terms of the customer listening, but it's not just about listening to customers; it's about taking that information into consideration, testing retesting, deploying, that seems to be at the core of Dell's DNA to me. For sure. From the years I've been covering Dell technologies. Yeah, but if I go into Home Depot and all I need is a hammer, <laughs> I don't need somebody telling me about some super complicated next gen technological thing. It's like, look, I need a hammer. Well, here you go. <laughs> Dell will give you the hammer for the workloads. That is but don't you want to know, job. I know you, don't you want to know like, the yeah. next level of yeah, the but, hammer evolution. Yeah, of course, of course you do. But if you're, but you have a, you have, you have, t you have a retail business. You have ten stores, and you need these. You need compute capability and storage on site for latency reasons or whatever. You maybe you've got some security cameras running, whatever, whatever it is. Um, it doesn't become a chasing the shiny object game. It's it becomes very much block and tackle, and it'll be very interesting to see as time goes by what percentage of Dell's revenue is in that, what we some, sometimes call meat and potatoes part of the market uh, that certainly can't be abandoned as we chase the shiny object. In our last couple of minutes, Omar, what's been some of the feedback from the customers and the partners that you've had a chance to talk to about some of these announcements? I imagine they're excited, they see opportunity, but what's been that kind of circle of feedback from your perspective? Great, great question. So the, the response has been very po positive so far and, uh, and uh, met with a good number of customers and partners. They're very excited to see these entry compact uh, you know, servers, the one socket rack and tower, T160 and R260. They, they are very happy to see that we were able to you know, uh, you know, uh, incorporate the voice of the customer and get these uh, designs uh, into our 16th generation. Uh, and uh, they seem very excited that we also were able to hit on the sustainability element that you highlighted uh, earlier. And uh, you, so far it's been a very positive and uh, over overwhelming good response. Excellent, and, and, and pardon me if you mentioned this and I missed it, availability? Uh, for sure, you know, these are enterprise 
the availability in terms of time. When can you get this? We announced that we announced these servers uh, May 14th. Uh, they will be available to order uh, May 29th. Okay. In a couple of days. Omar, thank you so much for coming on the program and sharing what's new with Power Edge from a product planning perspective, what's in it for customers, what you're delivering to them, and how you're enabling them to really foundationally modernize for the next phases of their evolution. We so appreciate your insight. Thank you for having me. It's, it's my pleasure. Our pleasure as well. Thank you. For our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching 6.5 on the road from Vegas, baby. It's Dell Tech World 2024, the AI edition. Dave and I will be right back with our next guest, so stick around. <laughs>